Welcome everyone, this is Weird William, and today I'm going to be going over a design that I've come up with for an iron farm for 1.14. And I like this iron farm design because I think it's more compact, more efficient than a lot of the other iron farm designs I've seen. It's also nice and symmetrical with nice clean lines and easy to make. A lot of the other builds involve hundreds of villagers, there are these massive structures, and I wanted to come up with something for me and for you that is more suitable for any individual's survival Minecraft base. I'll also go over the mechanics of how iron farms work to give you the confidence to modify this design to fit your individual needs or even come up with your own design if you like. So let's get started. Now this wouldn't be one of my tutorials if I didn't go over the mechanics of what I'm doing here, what's going on in the background. So in Minecraft 1.14 to spawn an iron golem you need several things to be going on with the villagers. You need a place where the villagers are clustered together, where each one has its own bed that it can sleep in at night. Each one will be bonded to an individual bed. Each villager needs a workstation that it can work at during the day, again individually bonded one to each villager. And then they need to be clustered enough that they can gossip together at certain times of day. And once a group of five of them gossips enough about the fact that they don't have an iron golem around to protect them in, in this horrible world full of zombies and monsters, then again once they reach that threshold level one of them will have this aha moment and say ah i'm going to summon one and one one will appear and so those different things will happen at different times of day so let me go over that so i've set up these command blocks we have time zero which is sunrise 2000 is mid morning 6000 is noon 9000 is mid afternoon and 12000 is sunset and villagers will work at their workstation at 2,000 and at 6,000 at noon. You can see their little heads go down at their workstation and incidentally these are the two times of day when they'll refresh their trades as well if you've locked out their trades. The gossip times are from time zero and oh we see there's been several clusters of villagers that have built up enough gossip to summon golems. And so that happens when that does happen they kind of purge their gossip levels and need to build those up again over the course of potentially a few days. And so, yeah, from 0 to 2,000 is a gossip period, and then from about 9,000 to sunset is another time when they can gossip and summon golems. I haven't seen golems spawn any other times. And as you can see, they're double bunking over here, and I'm going to talk about that and also the mechanics of golems spawning around the villager just coming up here in a second. If you look at most other iron farm tutorials, you'll see that they're usually designed with a big chamber that is coated on the bottom with beds and the villagers are standing on top of those beds and there's workstations around those. And in that case, well, that's fine, but if you double bunk them, then instead of needing a two by one space per villager, you can have a one by one space per villager. You see here we have a two by one space and we have all of the things that two villagers need. You can put the workstations around the edge and put the bottom one on the level of the top head and then the top one on top of that. Now when an iron golem spawns, it spawns in a box that is 16 by 16 by 6 tall or 5 tall and centered around the villager that is spawning it. So 8 out this way, 8 back, 8 to the side, 8 this way, and then as, as high up as this level relative to the villager on his bed, and as low down as this level. And if you have platforms on any of these levels in between, then they can spawn on those as well. And the golem will make 10 rapid attempts to spawn at 10 random locations anywhere within that box, and if any of those locations are valid, meaning uh, the iron golem needs a 2x2x3 two by two by tall space on solid blocks to spawn, then it will spawn and you'll have that iron. If, on the other hand, all 10 of those attempts fail, then the Iron Golem will not spawn. You'll lose that Iron Golem and you will lose that Iron. And so to kind of visually represent this, if you have a big holding area right here full of beds on one layer, and you have one villager right here, then, well, he can't spawn in here because you've taken measures to prevent spawning. You don't want that anyway. But the only other places he can spawn, you've kind of cut off an entire quadrant of the potential spawning surfaces. Because given the, the vertical limitations, you can never have golems spawning above or below these villagers. They have to spawn along the sides of the cell. On the other hand, if you have a more compact holding cell, then you've opened up a little extra space where you can have a platform, say, and have more efficient spawning that way. 
I also think that the villagers clustered closer together like this will cause more efficient gossip to happen more rapidly, and that'll help your farm work better too. So if you take a look over here, even though I'm not covering all of the potential spawning areas in my farm, for example, I don't have anything out over here really, um, just by covering maybe 30 or 40% of the possible locations, then between all 10 of those attempts, there should be the golem spawning on one of these spots that I do have about 95% of the time, according to my calculations. And I'm fine with a 5% loss. I think this farm is a nice size, 22 by 14, and it works great. And so, you know, you, it's really not necessary to totally coat the entire area around the cell with platforms. Let me also just show you really quickly when the villagers go to sleep. You can see them teleporting down, some of them, to that bottom layer of beds. And then when they get up in the morning, let's wake them up. So there's enough gossip to spawn a golem. They will all teleport back up to that top layer. So you can see that in action. And again, since this is more compact, even if I have one villager, you know, in one corner over here, um, he still has all seven of these to spawn on, and a little more over here that a golem could potentially spawn in off of that one villager instead of having maybe this whole section taken up by a room to hold the villagers. So it's just more efficient, it's more compact. Alright, well enough about mechanics, right? So let's get to building this thing. Now I've started out with the foundation for the villager holding cell. It's a six wide kind of cell, so one, two, three, four, five, six by 10 long, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I've blocked up seven for each of these pillars, and then we'll start to connect them. Now you can build this lower if you like, if you want that uh, iron collection chest to be a little bit underground, but if you do go too low, you might have villager issues if you have um, you know, raids being generated off your artificial village inside of your farm, and you might have ravager beasts coming to wreck your farm, and if they can reach critical components, that could be bad. So you do want it a little bit off the ground, or even you could build it deep underground. You just want to make sure there are no gaps that iron golems could spawn in inside, you know, undiscovered tunnels around the farm. And then you want to fill this in with glass. This is the only part of the farm that has to be a non-opaque block so that golems will not spawn inside of your farm, inside of your holding cell, that is, with the villagers, because you will not be able to get them out very well. Okay, so we're going to do our first layer of beds, like this. Again, this is going to have 32 villagers. That's kind of the maximum for this particular design, because I think it's not so many that you're causing huge server lag, but it's enough to have a pretty efficient farm. If you want to do fewer beds, you can. You can just put some glass at the bottom here on this level, and then just one level of beds on top. It's up to you. And then we want to fill in this first level over here around the uh, bottom level of beds and then on that top level with the top beds we can put our workstations our bottom level of workstations like this and then up one more so that's 16 on that side and then we can do 16 more on this side and we have 32 workstations and 32 beds all in this relatively small space Let's fill this in a little bit and fill in this side. Again, this can be an opaque kind of block, but I like to see what's going on. See if my villagers are still there, if they've died inexplicably, but uh, it's up to you. Now off of this same level as the top workstations, you can block out eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and eight over here. I'm just gonna do one side and then fill it in kind of off screen so that we're not wasting time watching my kind of noob blocking skills here. Uh, but this will be the top platform. And then the bottom platform over here, it'll have a gap of three in it so that iron golems can spawn. They do need three high for a spawning area. And then we'll just block out the same eight and go over like this. So it's totally even with the other dimensions of the farm. All right. And at this point you can fill these in, do the ones on the other side, and then we'll take it from there. So at this point your farm should look something like this. We have these four eight by eight platforms on um, two levels, 
and they should all be able to have iron golem spawn on them. And then we're covering the outside edge with a too high layer of blocks, um, the bottom layer to hold in the water, the top layer to keep the iron golems from just spawning on top. And let me finish up uh, the glass over here on the last section up over here. So if you want, you don't even need to build this final row. Um, I just like how it looks, but you know, if you're really trying to save blocks, you can omit that and just have the glass kind of come out diagonally on the side. You could use half slabs um, for these instead of solid blocks. Um, that's really up to you. You can also use a different kind of workstation, but I like composters because they're made all out of wood, and if you click on them by accident, you don't open up an interface that you have to exit out of. So we'll fill all this in for the villagers here, and eventually we can cover this up here with a roof. Um, but for now, let's just leave it like this, open to the top so we can get those villagers in. And then at this point, that's all set. So what we want to do is come down one from the level of this bottom platform, and then come out one here, and then come out three. So this should be four long, one level below this platform, and just kind of dipping in one block into this uh, little inner area here. And then we're just going to build that back. Oops, like this, all the way to the same edge as this slightly higher platform, just like that. And in this particular build, I have it going this far, you can extend it out so that, you know, if there's a villager here, then that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine for the edge. You can extend that out if you like. I just like that it's a little bit more compact this way, and then you don't need a million hoppers down at the bottom or yet another water level to funnel the golems to, you know, some even lower place where you're collecting them. I think this is pretty efficient how it is. So we have this on this side, and let's do the other one on the other side. I'll just do that quick off screen. Okay, and now your farm should look something like this. I did misspeak earlier. I should point out that you do want the top layer of all of these walls to also be glass or some transparent block. I found that if you do use a half slab, I was seeing golems spawn on those half slabs, which is pretty strange, but uh, it happens, so let's not do that. Let's use glass on all of the top edges of all of these border walls. Now over here, let's start to do the water. That's kind of a fun part. Let's get a water bucket. And I figured out a kind of neat trick over here. You might notice that this platform now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine long, but water only goes eight. Uh, but what you can do is fill in these back blocks. And so it's going over there, but then you can also fill in the blocks right in front of them with water. And when you do this, you don't need a water bucket full of water for every single block. As long as you have the two on the sides, then you can space it out every one or two blocks. So here, let's put one there, maybe there, there, and there. And you notice that this is a zone of dead water right here, but since iron golems are two by two creatures, if one is in this corner, this water right here in this section will be pulling it this way and it'll move along. So you can actually do a little bit of a cheat and have it be nine long. And so I like that about this farm. And then we're just gonna do the same on the other sides here. Like that. And set all of these up. All right, and then like this. And then down over here. like that. And the same goes with these. These are also nine long, um, but you can do the same kind of trick. And so I'm taking advantage of this is the highest possible platform that they can spawn on relative to the villagers on the beds. And this is the lowest possible platform that iron golems are spawning on. But we have a kind of water conveyance system that's going over here and dumping them eventually in the lava. So let's finish this up over here. Like that. All right. And now at this point, we can go ahead and build that kill station over here. So let's fill this up with glass back here. Yep, 
Yes, I'm not one of those people that blocks at 800 miles an hour. And then we want to build out to the edge of this platform right here. So just build that out like that. And on the other side, like this, you want it to be too wide in the middle and the wall should come up to the lip of these two lower platforms. All right, and now we can put the chest right here. Put hoppers going in. And then we can cover this up with glass like this. Glass is fun because you can still open the chest even when there's glass on top. And then fill that all the way up like that. Now for this you want to put the sign not on the block directly above the hopper, but the one... Whoops. <laughs> now when you crouch, you go down a little bit in Minecraft 1.14. So put it on the one, uh, the second one up. And we're just going to put signs here. These will hold the lava up over the hoppers so that the lava will only be touching the iron golem's head as it falls in here. And then when it dies, all of the drops spawn kind of at its feet and fall in the hoppers rather than getting burned in the lava that might be lower down. And then at this point, you can just put in one square of lava and it'll fill up the hole. And there you go. The last step of building your farm, obviously, is adding all of the villagers in. And you want as many villagers as you have beds and workstations. Now, I've tried this out and I put two unemployed villagers in. They picked up two workstations. I threw them food and they made a baby. And from what I understand of villager breeder mechanics, from the tutorials I've seen, you should just be able to keep throwing food in here until the villagers breed up enough babies to grow up and occupy all of these beds. You should get as many villagers in here as there are beds. And they should all pick up the workstations, unless you have some other kind of workstations that, that aren't claimed within 50 of this farm. Um, if you have a lectern down there that's not claimed by any villagers, this one grows up and is unemployed for an instant, and it could pick up that lectern and it will not be able to get to it to work during the day. It will not be participating in the summoning of iron golems that is going on with these other villagers in here. So just make sure they're unemployed when they arrive or grow up and they pick up these workstations. And then just cover them up with a roof, hopefully glass, and you should be all set. And I think we're all set. So thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave any questions, comments, or concerns in the comment section of the video. And thanks again.